gonna take it. Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to an episode of Fung Bros Hoops. This is a new series on our channel where we, together, are going to be trying to explain to you the game of basketball. And not that we are experts, but we know a thing or two. And if we don't know it, Nelson's gonna know it. And if Nelson doesn't know it, we're gonna look it up. <laughs> we're gonna be showing you the top six most basic, fundamental, offensive play actions that you got to know if you are playing basketball. And what is a play action? A play action is just a predetermined motion on the court. There's a lot of people who have even played a lot of basketball who may not be familiar with these actions. I think even there's some people who actually go through these actions but don't know what they're even called. They don't understand the fundamental concept, you know, in the basic simple things. Are you familiar with any of the fundamental play actions? Only the cookie jar. <laughs> so that's talking about shooting form, yeah. but you have heard about pick and rolls before. I've heard of them, but I don't know into detail exactly how to do them. We will get to walk you through what all these basic plays are. I know me and Dave, we got one play we run together. And that's about it. Six simple basketball plays. Let's, Let's go. go. And number one, the most famous play of basketball that you gotta know, it's the pick and roll. All right, Linda, real quick, what do you know about the pick and roll? You pick and you roll somewhere, but I don't know where. Do you know what the pick is and do you know what the roll is? Oh, pick is when you're in front of somebody like guarding them. And then roll is you must be rolling away somewhere. And there is nothing more basic and yet nothing executed any closer to perfection than the Utah Jazz pick and roll. A lot of teams, uh, whether it's college, NBA, use a lot of the pick and roll action. Linsanity was partially started because of he the D'Antoni pick and roll. He lived in the pick and roll. While it might not be the oldest play in the book, it is, without question, the most popular. So there's a lot of ways to call for a screen. You know, come here like this, you know, verbally. David sent me a screen. Screen left, screen right. If I put my right fist up, that means I want a screen on my right side. If I put on the left fist, I want a screen on my left side. I also know sometimes the screener might make the call for the screen and let the person know, hey, I'm coming to screen for you. Wait for my screen. And then the ball handler knows, okay, that's the play. All right, Linda's about to start off the pick and roll. She calls for the screen. David takes out Andrew. Linda goes all the way for the shot. So for the second scenario, Linda's gonna set up the same way. She calls for the screen, David sets the screen, but this time Linda passes the ball to David for the layup. Another version of the pick and roll is actually called the pick and pop. What pop means this time, normally the screener is a good outside shooter, maybe a smaller guy who doesn't finish well inside. In this sense, David sets the same exact screen, but instead of rolling to the basket, he's gonna pop outwards away from the basket for a shot, whether it's a mid-range shot or a three-point shot. You, you see a lot of big men nowadays, you know, with the whole game changing in the NBA, a lot of players are actually doing more pops than rolls because they're going for that three-point shot. All right, Linda, now that you've been the ball handler in three different situations, yeah. what is your preferred outcome? I prefer the second one the most, where you pick, you roll, and I pass it to you. Personally, as a shorter player that doesn't finish that well, I prefer the third option, the pick and pop. But you can't dictate where you're gonna go, just predetermine on where you wanna go. You gotta see where the defender's gonna go, and you go to the opposite or open spot away from the defender to get open. I know a lot of people out there, they're scared to set a good screen. Do not be scared because literally the pick and roll will not work if you don't set a solid screen right there and you get up close. There are four biggest mistakes when people are doing the pick and roll. One is body contact, two is angle, three is timing, and four is closing the gap. So for body contact, the screener has to make contact with the defender to make the screen effective. Angle is how to angle your screen to make the screen effective. Even if you make body contact, if you don't have the angle right, the defender could still get away from you. So if David wants to set a screen for Linda to go left, he has to set an angle right here where Andrew will get laid out right to his chest. The timing of the screen is very crucial because the ball handler cannot go too soon. They have to wait for the screener to set the screen first and hold their position before they move or else it would be a legal screen. So as the ball handler, with timing, you gotta lead your defender into the screener. If the ball handler calls for a screen, the ball handler has to wait for the screen. And lastly, closing the gap, pretty much what this means is that Linda has to be as tight as possible to David on the screen so Andrew cannot go through. I'm gonna be following Linda as closely as I can, but if she just rubs shoulders with David, that leaves no space for me to get through. It's a two-part equation, guys, because the screener has a responsibility to make the contact at the right angle, and the ball handler has to hit it close enough and lead the defender into the screen. You, you have, have to, to like... bait him into my trap. My oh. trap is set. So I can run like this. But now you have to... But if you come shoulder to shoulder, you're essentially making use of the trap. Right. There's a way to mess up the trap if you cut too wide. The screener has set the trap. Boom, trap set. Trap set. Boom. How did the 
trap. Trap utilized. This is a tight screen. He rolls off and he shoots it. Ah, I see. Right here. This is another one. Oh, he rolls it. He oh. gives it oh. to Andrew. Oh, David. Oh, yes. Oh, Andrew. Oh, gives it up top. Oh. He goes for it. Oh, yeah. Linda, do you understand the pick and roll way better than you did? I understand it so much more. Everything makes sense. Screen number I'm one. I'm defending you. Hey, oh. screen, screen, screen. Oh, yo, what? Oh. Hopefully, the people watching. They know the three different types of pick and rolls options that they have, which is taking it to the rack, passing it to the screener, or pick and pop. And you also know now the mistakes that you can make in a pick and roll. Just because you do three out of the four correctly, it can all fall apart if you don't do the fourth. And most importantly, it requires the ball handler and the screener to be on the same page in order for them to execute the pick we, and roll. We gotta have the mind yeah. meld. Linda, when we play together now, you can call out one, two, or three. That's our lingo. Yeah. We know. I get it now. Well, the pick and roll is actually pretty complicated where you have to read what the defender's gonna do, whether they're gonna show on top of the pick or go under the pick. That determines what type of shot you're gonna have or what type of pass you're gonna have. That's why the NBA players love it so much and the guards who are really quick at decision making, making those reads, they love the pick and roll. It just mixes up the defense. A lot of people do the pick and roll not even to score, just to get a mismatch. The pick and roll took a long time to explain, but I'm glad we did because it is a complicated move with a lot of variables. This move, the backdoor cut, not so complicated. Basically, you're just trying to catch your defender looking, just not paying attention, and you slip in the back door. If the defender is overplaying really heavily, or like you said, they're sleeping, they're not paying attention to what's going on, and then you know you backdoor them. Have you ever heard of a backdoor cut, Linda? No. Sounds like you're sneaking in the back door to get in the house. That's pretty much <laughs> it. It's really about you reading the defender and catching them at that vulnerable moment. So this is what it's like to overplay. Deny, 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 deny. Oh. Oh. So it's really important to sell the fake pass and also the fake cut. If you acted like you knew that backdoor cut was coming, Andrew would not overcommit on the deny. This is when you see your defender not paying attention. It is a great time to make a cut towards the basket. Because for whatever reason, whether they're looking at his shoes or thinking about something else, or maybe the person that the defender's playing has not gotten the ball in a while, so he's kind of like, kind of deeming that person as inactive. Well, guess what? That's a good time to catch him off guard. You don't really got a jab step or fake one way. If they're not paying attention, just Go. Where you going, man? Oh, whoa! Yo, man, why you sleeping? Are you Jr. Smith? Cause, cause I, you did not hear just some in-game examples of a backdoor cut. As you can see, as the passer, I'm about to throw some fakes in there. Boom, like there's boom, boom. You know, just to further sell it. Let's go. Obviously, it's illegal to push the defender out of the way, but you know, give him a little nudge, get him stuck. Come on, Linda, get open, Linda. Get the ball, man. Oh. Oh. Hey! Now, as the defender who just fell asleep on one play, I'm gonna overplay Linda because I'm gonna be like, I don't want her to get the ball and embarrass me anymore. Hey! Thirteen and ten. Nice backdoor cut. Next up, we have the give and go. It's pretty self-explanatory. You literally just give the ball and you go and get it back. You dribble off the ball, you pass, and then you go. Whoa! Antonio Spurs and they are going toe to toe. Hold on, it's from twenty. Whoa! The give and go in that instance, it almost looked like a backdoor cut. It could be backdoor, pretty much just cut to the basket. Basically, these plays can work in unison. You can layer the plays on top of each other. Well, I think the reason why it's called the give and go is more about the timing and how quick it happens. All these different actions don't have to live only by themselves. You can combine them to make plays. So that's why the give and go might look like a backdoor cut sometimes. Whoa. Oh. The give and go alley -oop. Back 
back to Horford rolling to the basket. The number fourth move is the dribble handoff, and this is actually a play that me and David do a lot since we play a lot of basketball together. After we've talked about all these other plays, it almost feels like a combination, like we said, where it's like a give and go with a screen where you're passing it to me, I'm ultimately passing it right back to you, but in that, I might be setting kind of a subtle screen right there. Linda, have you ever heard of a handoff play? I haven't. Okay. Linda, oh, there are two variations of the handoff play. One is the pass and handoff, and the other is the dribble and handoff. You don't know either, right? All right, All right. so we're gonna show you. So basically how it works is the ball handler passes the ball to whether it's the high post player or any player, and then he runs up towards it, gets it back, either for a shot or attacking for the layup. Andrew can kind of act as in like a mini screen, you know, to give him extra space to get through. Woo! What I love about this play is that usually in pickup ball, defenders are not guarding you that tight. So if you're a good shooter, David's a pretty good shooter from the three point line. So that's gonna be good because most likely they're not gonna fight through my screen super hard because I'm setting this slight screen. They're gonna wanna switch, but by the time David gets the ball right here, he's already in a position to shoot. For the second version of the dribble handoff, I'm going to dribble directly towards David's defender. Let's go. No, it's a handoff! Ah. Ah. The handoff! Oh no, she's gonna shoot it again! She's gonna shoot it again! Oh. Hey! Good layup, good layup. Yo, Linda, I think the handoffs might be your thing. Yeah, I like it because it's fast. Because, like, for, as a defender, if I was a defender, like, I wouldn't have time to think, like, oh, what's happening, you know? Better running plays. Next up, we have all the different types of cuts in basketball. Cuts are very important because it requires you to get to an open spot. There's different variations. After researching this video is that I need to do more V cuts because as a shooter, sometimes, you know, people start to play you like you're gonna play for the shot. Obviously, you need to make a V cut in, throw your defender off a little bit, catch the ball outside if they're playing you too tight. You know, you're gonna be able to free yourself up. Okay, so Nell's my defender. Instead of just standing in space, being bored, if he's locking me up, I'm just gonna hit him with the V cut. This is what's gonna happen if a shooter does not V cut. Give me the ball! No! Yeah, I got you. Yo. Lock up, lock up, lock up, lock up. Ooh, nice. V for victory. There's tons of different types of cuts, but these are some of the most popular. This one is called the L cut. L cut! A deep cut is exactly what it describes. It's a deep cut. You're going from one end of the court to the other. It's a long cut. Next up, we have the flash cut. Normally people say flash to the high post. You start from the block to the free throw line. It's called a flash cut because Linda's gonna be running up to flash for the ball. Woo! So this is the curl cut. Nelson's gonna be curling around a screen. David is at the top. He's gonna drop down a little bit to set a screen for Nelson. And Nelson is gonna pop up and curl into the middle. You're supposed to use the curl cut when the defender is trailing or chasing you. Okay, Linda, what did you learn about the cuts? You have to really fake it to get the defender away from you. The V cut was my favorite because it's like a, I think it really you can get away from the defender. Also the U one was really good too. I think especially for people who are just learning basketball and are not like, don't have the one-on-one -on -one skills developed yet, cutting is the best way to score. If you play with people who play a lot of organized basketball or somebody who has more of a point guard mindset, they are definitely gonna want you to cut a lot. Last but not least, the sixth most fundamental move that you need to know for basketball is the drive, draw, and dish, AKA the 3D. This is actually an incredibly common basketball move that you see at every level as well. I mean, it's really the way, how kind of how the game is moving right now with the stretch fours, everybody's stretching the floor, everybody's moving out to the three-point line, but you got quick guards who can drive in, 
and kick the ball out. You're supposed to drive, draw in the defenders, dish or kick it out, and then you could continuously do that until you get a good shot. What you have is a spot up shooter in the corner of the wing. You have the ball handler on top. They're gonna drive, make the defense collapse, and kick it out. So I'm gonna drive or penetrate aggressively where the defense gonna have to collapse enough where I kick it out to David for the open shot. Oh, no. uh, we we'll get the next one. I'm no, but it. basically, you guys saw what happened. Nelson beat the ball strong side because if you beat it weak side, he wouldn't. He might not collapse, right? Yeah. So you have to beat your defender towards the side of the shooter just to draw in my defender a few feet just to give me enough time to get the shot off. So basically, I'm trying to draw Andrew's defender Nelson to me. So I'm gonna shake David real quick. Oh. Oh no, I got the help. Yo! Yay! So Linda drove it in. She drew in the defense from all different sides because everybody had to help because she is a threat. And then she dished it out to me for the open J. So basically what we're talking about guys, that was six fundamental play actions, AKA plays that can be strung together, layered on top of each other to make really complex plays. Obviously, if you guys watch the NBA, they run a lot more advanced stuff, but what we wanted to do is show you how relatable these things can be, because we know a lot of people who play basketball who never run these type of plays with their friends. Anybody can do these. You do not have to be a super high IQ player to even do this. Linda, what do you think about now that you, we covered so many different play actions today? Do you feel like your basketball IQ of the X's and O's and technical side has increased? Increased by a lot because now I know how to cut better. I know all the plays, pick and roll. Before I would always just try to get open, but you can go, there's just so many ways to do it now. Now that you understand all six fundamental play actions, what do you think is a combo of like two or three of them that you'd like to layer together? Like you're like, ooh, that would be my go-to. I think the V cut with the handoff. Okay. V cut handoff. V cut handoff. V cut into a handoff, you could do that. Yeah. You be the person who is the recipient, you V cut and then receive a handoff for a jumper. Sure. I'm putting you on the spot, Linda. Oh, all these terms, now I know what they okay. mean. Linda has created her very own and very first basketball play. Here's the play. She's gonna do a V cut handoff. That means she's gonna do a V cut and then Nelson's gonna do a dribble handoff straight to her and she's gonna hit the shot. Linda, what do you think about that? You just formulated, based off the play actions that you learned today, your own combo play. It's great. I feel like uh, I should be in a menu on a Vietnamese restaurant. The pho special. Linda special. Yeah, you're right, because pho special, they don't just have one thing in them. They have a combination mm. of ingredients. Ah. Linda. You could coach now. With the six fundamental play actions, it's very important to know these because as simple and as basic as they are, they are very key to basketball games. It's an easy way to get a bucket. Doing the research for this video let me know how much I don't know. Because I was looking at clips and b-ball breakdown, it was getting super complicated, and they were breaking down how NBA players like get their buckets. Because I think so often, Andrew, in the NBA signature moves, we're just showing the ISO street ball play. The majority of points in the NBA are actually produced off system basketball which is the play actions layered on top of each other. So I just found out how much I didn't know. These six play actions are the best way to start. You will have more fun playing basketball and you will not only have more fun playing basketball, you will have more fun watching basketball too because you'll know what's going on. I think that having a strategy, you're gonna win more games. Because if you don't, everyone's scattered around, they don't know what they're doing, but if you can play it right and you have you know, you let your partner know what's going on, the game plays, then you guys are gonna score more baskets. You know, <laughs> like many things in life, guys, if there's two groups going against each other and one is more organized and has better communication flow, the odds are that organization is gonna win. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that episode of Fun Rose Hoops. This was our very first one where we're trying to teach the game of basketball. Uh, we're learning it as we make these videos. So thank you guys for watching. Please, in the comment section below, make sure you let us know what are some other video topics you would like us to make surrounding the game of basketball and hoops culture. Big shout out to Nelson Chamber Hoop and Life. Check out his channel. Big shout out to Linda D, AKA Linda D. Check out her channel too. She's got a lot of funny stuff going on. And until next time, we out. Peace. Yo, Linda D, I think that might stand for Linda Drive, Draw, and Dish now. Linda Triple, triple D. D. <laughs> Linda Triple D. Linda Triple D.